everyone. We're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, my name is LaVon Lawson, and I am the outgoing president of the Beverly Hills Bar Association. Um, <laughs> so I'm delighted to be able to welcome you, and uh, thank you for coming. We are very happy that you're here and delighted to see each of you. Um, in terms of uh, how we're going to uh, do this is so that, you know, we're going to acknowledge the people here. We're going to swear in the boards. At one time, the boards of our Bar Association, our barristers, and our foundation. Uh, we'll have lunch, and then after that, we will have presentations and awards. So that is the order. And at this point, it is my honor to introduce our past presidents. So I hope that everyone will please wait. I'm going to ask our past presidents to stand. And uh, if you will please hold applause until they've all been standing. That would be greatly appreciated. Past presidents, if I miss anyone, just stand up anyway. At this point, Barry Shanley, Christopher Bradford, Howard Fredman, John Rubiner, Kenneth Petrulis, Lawrence Goldman, Lawrence Jacobson, Diane Cartman, Linda Spiegel, Mark Poster, Mark Steinberg, Michael White, Nicholas Alice, Richard Kaplan, Steve Roucher. Those are our past presidents. Thank you. Thank you for being here. At this point, I'd also like to thank, to acknowledge certain special guests that we have here, um, our judges and other guests. We, we appreciate that you're all here. Uh, just, just an extra hello to Judge John Siegel, Judge Susan Lopez Giss, Ronald Brott, LA County Bar Association President, Tamala Jensen, LA County Bar Association President-elect, Stan Bissey, LA County Bar Association Executive Director, and Brad Polly. Thank you for being here. At this point, I'd like to thank some very important people who are our sponsors. So thank you, dinner sponsors. For our gold sponsors are US Bank and the firm of Feinberg, Mendel, Brandt, and Klein, LLP. Thank you. Our silver sponsors are Dykema and Lawrence Jacobson, APC. Thank you. Our member benefit provider is Swift Chip. I'd like to also give special thanks to Greg Victoroff and the Princeton Williams Jazz Ensemble that you heard in the courtyard. And also special thanks to Amy Newman and ARC. And of course, I would definitely, I de would be remiss if I did not acknowledge, um, well, our staff. Our staff works tirelessly to make this happen. Thank you, Beverly Hills Bar Association staff. We greatly appreciate you. And um, we have some long-standing members, and you can find them in your programming. And I mean long-standing programs uh, members. So we, I want to acknowledge them. You'll find them in the program and thank them for their support. At this point, it is, um, I, I want to explain again just briefly before I um, introduce our installing officer. What we're going to do is we're going to be swearing in at one time. Well, first, actually, I'll acknowledge our outgoing Board of Governors members, and then we'll be swearing in our, uh, as I indicated, our Bar Association Board, Foundation Board, and Barristers Board. So first, I'd like to acknowledge outgoing members of the Beverly Hills Bar Association Board of Governors. Those are Sam Bruschi, Alan Forsley, Suzanne Schwartz, Jeff Shane, and Francis Ryu. At this point, now we get to install our boards, our officers and presidents. It is my honor to, at this point, introduce our installing officer, and his name may sound familiar. It is my great pleasure to introduce Judge Ronald M. Sohegan. <laughs> I 
The Honorable Ronald M. Sohegian was appointed to the Los Angeles Superior Court by Governor Judge George Duke Majan in 1988. He retired in 2014 after a variety of assignments, concluding with 19 years in a direct calendar court in the Stanley Moss Courthouse. Before his appointment, Judge Sohegian practiced business litigation in Los Angeles for 27 years. He is a graduate of Yale University and Harvard Law School. In case you didn't notice, Judge Sohegian is the father of incoming Beverly Hills Bar Association President, Michael Sohegian. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm, uh, I'm really very pleased to be the installing officer. And I know some of these people, and uh, I know they're very honored and very committed to the work that they're going to do. I'd like for these people to stand up because what we're going to do, since there are a few of them, is give one oath to a number of people. First, uh, so I'll read the names, and as I read your name, please stand up. You want them to stand rather than come up here, correct? So that's the way we'll do it. So it'll be a uh, it'll be a delivered oath. In other words, an oath at your place. The first person is Adam Siegler. Adam. All right. Uh, how about Anthony Ross? Okay, Mr. Ross. Malcolm McNeil. Alexander Rufus Isaacs. Now, what happens that Alexander Rufus Isaacs and I had a case. Uh, I was the judge and he was the attorney. And I said, I'll just, just, just be patient with me. Uh, we, 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 we old timers like to tell stories. So I said to him, I said, are you related to the great British barrister Rufus Isaacs? He said, not only am I related to him, he was my grandfather or something like that. And we changed our family name so that it was no longer a single family name, but it was Rufus Isaacs, his first name and his last name. I was very impressed with them, as I have, as I have been with, well, I'll tell you about that a little bit later. <laughs> Dimitri Gorin. Levon Lawson, Neville Johnson, Dan Kramer, Jonah Grossbart, Nadira Imam, Jack McMorrow, Paul Karen, Diane Karpman. All right, I think I have the, I think I have the names and the uh, things set up properly. Now I've already mentioned the name of Nadira Iman, and she should be standing at a respectful attention. There she is. David Vogmeister, Kent Grover, Yasmin Gill. You want all these others too? Um, yes, maybe Jack all right, Jack McMorrow, and these are the board members now: Doron Egbali, Lauren Gabayan, Jan Goldstein, Danielle Grabois, Jonah Grossbart, Roy Hadavi, Esse Omofoma. David A. Pellets, Daniel S. Rubin, Leroy Williams, Elizabeth Hall Peterson. Now is that it? Then we have the foundation All right, let's do the foundation officers too. Ready? Stephen Young, Alan Wayne Forsley, Ferris Greenberger, Mark A. Lieberman, and Jim Jahan. Jim and I are old friends. All right. And you want these two? Oh. Okay, let's get the foundation members. Robert Aronoff, Howard Fisher, Glenn Gottlieb, Olga Malayantz, Kenneth Petrulis, Levon Lawson, 
Adam Siegler, and Michael Sohegian. Oh. Do you want me and Linda? All right. Now the continuing president of the Beverly Hills Bar Foundation is Linda Spiegel. The incoming president of the Beverly Hills Barristers, that's the, that's the younger attorneys, is Dira Im Im Imam. And the incoming president of the Beverly Hills Bar Association is my son, of course, Michael Sohegian. Okay. Now, all of you who, who have been uh, made to stand, please remain standing. Raise your right hand. And what I'm going to do is administer the oath in its entirety. And then if you agree, you say, I do. All right. Hands raised. Do you solemnly affirm that you will seek to pursue justice, to maintain the high standards of our profession, and to improve the quality of legal services for all people? Do you further affirm that you will promote the interest and welfare of the Beverly Hills Bar Association and its members to the best of your ability? One more. Do you assume these obligations freely and with enthusiasm and pledge to well and faithfully discharge the duties which it will now be your honor to perform. If you agree, say, I do. I do. Is there any of you who did not say, I do? <laughs> I, think we've got, I, th I, I, I think we've got you all tied up then. Thank you. Thank you very much, and congratulations to you all. You're about to continue with some very, very important work, which I'll describe in, in a few moments. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been told that I'm supposed to call this gathering to order, and I'm doing that now because there are some more things that are supposed to go on. And I'm terribly sorry to interrupt your conversation. I, I, I see that it's very, very convivial, and we just have a little business to do, and I'd appreciate if you'd uh, work with me on it. I'm going to eventually in introduce my son and, and uh, the association's president, Michael Sohegan. But before I do that, have you had that experience where you uh, jump in a, a body of water, let's say a lake, you make a big splash. And then eventually, if you're sensitive, you recognize, wait a minute, that splash is going down. I'm really not as significant as I thought I was. In fact, now that I see the water is placid, I'm actually insignificant. I mean, I, lawyers feel that way quite often when dealing with transactional clients or in court. And I'm here to tell you that you are not insignificant. I mean, the, the, the ripples, the, the water never goes back to the same, to the same level. There was a judge of the United States Court of Appeals. His name was William Denman. He was out of San Francisco. He was born in the 1870s. He died in 1959 at the age of 82. And it turns out that when I started to practice law, I practiced in the law firm of his partner. And so they used to tell me in that law firm, they used to say, oh, well, old Judge Denman used to do this, and Judge Denman used to do that before he got on the Court of Appeals for the Ninth Circuit. He became actually uh, the, uh, he became the, the, uh, the chief judge, or whatever you call the, uh, the main judge on the Court of Appeals for the Ninth Circuit. And one of the things they told me about what old Denman used to say was, listen, he said, go to another lawyer's office, walk through the corridor, and if you see a lawyer looking out the window, beware of that lawyer. That lawyer may be thinking, and, and that's, a, that's a dangerous adversary, or a highly, highly, highly creative transactional attorney. That lawyer may be thinking. 
And I just want you to understand that your thinking adds immeasurably to the work that we all do as people involved in the legal community. You, uh, you profit from this association, from this Beverly Hills Bar Association, by access to the continuing education, by being the potential beneficiaries of the legislative advocacy that the organization does, by the collegiality among yourselves, by your cross-referral of cases, by just calling up another lawyer and saying, hey, listen, I've got this, how do I deal with this? And then the other lawyer will tell you. And in your work, I know in the courtroom where I sat for 26 years, and at the bar where I practiced for 27 years before that, it is the, it is the dependency of the of the transactional clients and of the courts on your work as lawyers that's just inescapable and it's so valuable. The, the lawyers will get up before judges and imagine that the judge knows it all. And in, look, we, we, we're, we're, we're attorneys, right? We know something about what's going on. In the appellate courts, you know, the California appellate court system, before you stand to argue, the case has already been more than provisionally decided. You'll notice that one judge will, one of the justices will question you and that justice will have some paper in front of her or him. And that's the draft decision. They've already put together a way to figure out how it's supposed to come out. In the trial courts, the situation is a little less, but don't you for a moment think that what you do is inconsequential, is like that jumping in the water, it's not that way at all. I remember thinking when I was on the bench how dependent we were on the skillful work of the attorneys and how betrayed we felt when the, when the level of the work being done was offhand, poorly considered. So understand that as the operation of any machine, any structure requires, you are the major impellers of that machine. You adjust, you alter, you figure out, and I'm here to tell you as a former member of the bar and as a former member of the judiciary, the work that you do is absolutely imperative, not only to the legal community, but to the community at large. And you should be both proud and feel a sense of obligation and burden to be confronted by that kind of responsibility and to have the opportunity to render that kind of service to the public and to your profession. So I'm glad to be here. I'm, I used to say when I was on the bench, sometimes when lawyers would get up and make an especially good argument, I would say, it is wonderful to be in the presence of lawyers, to be in the presence of lawyers because they've, they've thought it through and they're of tremendous assistance. Now, that doesn't mean you'll always win, but you'll win more than you lose, and you will be highly, highly, highly respected by both bench and bar. Well, I'm, uh, uh, that's all I have to say, and I, but I am ha here to introduce uh, my son and your president to say a few words, and I'll do that now. President Michael Sohegan, Come on up here, it's your turn. Uh, all right. Um, so in our family, uh, we say never follow the old man to the podium, and you can see why. <clears throat> um, I wanna talk to you about uh, the 
president of the Beverly Hills Bar Association up until about uh, 25 minutes ago. Um, she is uh, LaVon Lawson, uh, and she is, without a doubt, one of the most competent, energetic, enthusiastic, effective people that I have ever had the pleasure to work with. Um, I am uh, sorry uh, that she is no longer the president because that means my job becomes a lot harder. However, she will remain the immediate past president and uh, she should know that I will be relying on her pretty much for everything um, because she does everything better than I do. So please, Levon, I wonder if you would come up here and... Uh, Please uh, say a few words. Oh my goodness, those were the nicest remarks. I don't know what to say. Um, thank you, everyone. It has been a, an incredible year for me. Um, it, it was a lot of work, but it was so much fun. We have an amazing bar association, incredible community. I had an incredible exemplar before me in Rick Kaplan, who was past president right before me. I got to observe him. And I had the honor of working not only with him, but with Mike Sohigian for the past few years. It's teamwork. Our executive committee is amazing. I'm, I was honored to be a part of it. I was honored to be a part of leadership. I'm really looking forward to Michael's year. I know it's gonna be fantastic. So with that, thank you everyone. All right, well, you might have noticed that my father spoke extemporaneously. Uh, that tradition uh, will die with him. Um, I have uh, just a few brief remarks. <laughs> um, first of all, I want to echo what a few other people have said. Uh, thank you to the staff of the Beverly Hills Bar Association who worked so hard to put on this wonderful event. I am immensely gratified to see how many people are here to honor uh, my fellow officers uh, and uh, incoming board members. Your presence, each of you, means uh, an enormous amount to me. Uh, and thank you so much for being here. Uh, and the staff made it all possible. Uh, there's a lot of work that goes into planning uh, and arranging an event like this, and they do it all flawlessly. This is the, the uh, signature event of our year, but we have hundreds of events uh, throughout the year um, that they organize and, uh, and pull off to a T. Uh, and I would like you please to acknowledge their work. So thank you. I, I hope that you have enjoyed this evening so far. I can't really uh, make any promises for what is uh, yet to come, but I'll do my best. Um, now, especially the food, right? Uh, and I'd like also if we could take a moment to thank the people who prepared and served that food. Um, And among our guests today who honor me with their presence are the past presidents of our association uh, who are all sitting at one table because they are very clannish uh, and don't like to talk to anybody who's not a mucky muck at the Beverly Hills Bar Association. Um, but uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being here. Uh, and if you uh, need any legal advice, it's that table right over there. Um, all right. And the last person I want to thank uh, is the first person um, for the Beverly Hills Bar, and that is Mark Steinberg. Uh, he is... <laughs> he is, in many ways, the Beverly Hills Bar Association. Over the past 16 years, he has led this association to new heights. Um, he is uh, a class act in every way. Uh, and when I was coming up through the ranks, people told me that the best part of the job of being president was working with Mark. And then when I uh, was just getting ready to take the job, Mark announced that he was retiring. <laughs> so uh, thanks, pal. <laughs> OK. Uh, 
But most importantly uh, are all of you. Thanks again for coming. You honor Linda, Dira, my fellow board members and officers, and me with your presence tonight. Um, and with your showing of support for this wonderful association that we uh, all love, at least everybody in this room. Unfortunately, there are a lot of people in the world at large maybe who aren't so interested in the Beverly Hills Bar Association. Maybe they're not all that interested in organizations in general. These are tough times. I know looking over at Stan Bissey, who is the executive director of the Los Angeles County Bar Association, Association, which we sometimes refer to as the major leagues, while uh, our organization is a AAA ball club, uh, that, he, that he shares uh, very deeply that experience. Um, people are not joining uh, as much these days as they used to. Uh, and we live in a world that pushes us apart and encourages us to think of ourselves as free agents, um, doing it ourselves, uh, each one an individual, uh, whom the internet uh, allows to uh, do everything by ourselves with our Twitter and our social media, uh, our websites. Um, why do we need to uh, be with other people? But in fact, um, while the Beverly Hills Bar Association is a part of that world, and you will be hearing uh, probably much more uh, in months to come about our new website, uh, software that we have recently installed that will allow us to communicate with our members and allow our members to communicate with each other and with the uh, world at large, I guess what we're supposed to call uh, the cyber community um, in ways that uh, previously were really unimaginable. Um, and we're very excited about that. Um, still, what matters most is working with other people, the things that we can accomplish uh, as a group. Um, so the truth is we need each other. And we're best when we work with other people. Now, the best things in my life I have done with other people. I look at my wife, Catherine, and my son, Adam, my proudest creation. And of course, it's, he's not my creation. Um, I needed somebody's help for that. So uh, let's talk about the, the bar. Now, the Beverly Hills Bar Association is uh, like any organization. Um, as a professional association, we offer uh, our members uh, a lot of benefits. Uh, and it depends where you are, and really no matter where you are in the profession, um, you can benefit from our association. So young lawyers, for example, um, particularly in this world, uh, they often will come out of law school uh, into a world that does not provide a whole lot of mentoring. Uh, even if they have a, a job lined up with a firm, the firm, unlike the firm where I started, where uh, Michael McCarthy hired me, actually, um, uh, where they assigned you uh, a, uh, a junior associate as your mentor. Uh, we had weekly uh, MCLE classes uh, to teach us how to practice uh, the way the firm wanted us to. Uh, those sorts of things are uh, not so prevalent anymore. And uh, so the bar is a way for young lawyers to uh, meet uh, and work with uh, more seasoned practitioners uh, in a setting where they are not being judged, uh, the uh, consequences are not uh, so grave. They don't have to face any clients if things don't work out uh, quite the way they want to. And they can join together to solve problems. And that, after all, is what's important. Because the lawyer that you work with, the more seasoned lawyer that you work with as a young lawyer, sees you solve those problems, treats you like an equal, recognizes your ability and your quality. And that person will become a mentor to you, a source of business to you, a source of support, a source of advice, like uh, my father was saying. Um, so uh, then there are a lot of lawyers who are in the middle of their careers or toward the end of their careers. I don't know. I mean, if when you've practiced since 1991, I'm not sure exactly where you are there. Uh, and I'm still trying to figure that out. Um, 
but uh, the bar provides opportunities for us, too, um, to work with other lawyers, to uh, network, to learn, um, to find support, and also to reach out uh, to Sacramento, for example. We send a delegation to Sacramento every year um, to participate in the Conference of Delegates, now called the Conference of California Bar Associations, um, to have an outsized impact on the community that we're in, on our world, on our society, through the Bar Association. Even big firm lawyers need a Bar Association because the Bar Association represents the profession. The things that the Bar Association does are not tainted, if you will, by trying to make a living, trying to earn a fee. We don't have a client. Our clients are our members. We don't have a dog in the fight. And so the things that the Bar Association does, the positions that it takes, the uh, arguments that it makes, are straightforward and not subject to the kind of suspicion or skepticism that lawyers, uh, that, that, that the big firm lawyers uh, will do and will have to deal with. The Bar Association is not operating for profit. So the, not everybody in this room is a lawyer, but the lawyers in this room, I think, recognize that our profession is um, under attack uh, from a lot of different uh, angles. Uh, our political uh, government doesn't like lawyers very much. Um, our, our society. Uh, doesn't like lawyers very much. We've got uh, tort reform advocates um, who are trying to deny uh, access to the courts. Um, and uh, we've got uh, big businesses who are trying to get a piece of the pie, um, whether they are uh, artificial intelligence vendors uh, or uh, legal Zoom um, or paraprofessionals, uh, everybody is coming after us. Uh, and that's something that the, that the Bar Association is especially positioned to resist. That's the kind of thing that a Bar Association can really help their profession survive and thrive and accommodate to. So that's the macro view. The real question for me is, why am I here? What am I getting out of the Bar Association? What, why do I want to be the president of the Beverly Hills Bar Association? And what can I do to make the Bar Association more satisfying for me and for the people who are members of it? I, um, aside from my family, and my career. I have three principal extracurricular activities, and they're represented by my guests here today. Um, I am uh, active in my church, Westwood Presbyterian Church, and I've got guests here from there. Uh, I am active as an assistant scoutmaster of my son's Boy Scout troop in Troop 223 in Pacific Palisades, and I've got guests, that's right, from 223. And I'm active in the Beverly Hills Bar Association. Now, what is, compare and contrast, right, like they used to tell us in school. What are the similarities and what are the differences between those organizations? Now, obviously, the similarity are, is that there are things that I love um, and that I have been involved in deeply for many years. Um, and they are, uh, you know, they're respectable groups that try and do their best. But I will say, that the church and the Boy Scouts are organizations that are dedicated to a common set of beliefs and to a goal that is bigger than themselves, outside of the organization. The Bar Association and most professional organizations is really devoted to its own members. So it has a more, it has a focus on the inside. Um, so BHBA is built around benefiting its members and there's no question that the member benefits are important but through my involvement with these different organizations, I have come to the conclusion that what really motivates and provides vitality to organizations is 
service to others, and commitment to values. So the question for me then is, how do we make this bar association be at least as much about service to others as about service to our members? What are the core values that this bar association holds within itself that motivate our members and the association to provide service, to benefit our community, and to improve our society? Well, you can see in the program that we've got uh, a sort of a mission statement. We've got three words, lead, advocate, uh, and serve. So let me give you an example of leading. Um, I am proud to say that I am the first Armenian American president of the Beverly Hills Bar Association. <laughs> and I, f <laughs> thank you, thank you. I'm only half Armenian, so imagine how big the applause would have been if I were full-blooded. Um, and I follow the first Armenian American president of the county bar, the Los Angeles County Bar Association, Brian Kabatek, who's a good friend of mine who could not be here tonight. Um, and Brian and I are going to be leading a delegation to Armenia uh, in April of 2020 um, for what we Armenians know as Remembrance Day, uh, which will commemorate 105 years since the Armenian Genocide. And we intend, when we visit Armenia, to speak uh, to anybody who will listen um, to urge the government of the United States to recognize the genocide and to urge the government of Turkey to acknowledge the genocide. Now, you might say, good luck with that, and uh, your wishes will we'll accept all the good wishes we can get. Um, but it's the Bar Association that allows two lawyers to be able to do that. If two lawyers just showed up in Yerevan and started talking, it would just be, uh, you know, babble on the streets. But because we have the Los Angeles County Bar Association and the Beverly Hills Bar Association behind us, people will listen. That's the kind of leadership that uh, I am talking about. Um, and that also is, of course, advocacy. We also advocate for our profession, for the system of justice. Uh, it seems like ancient history now, but our uh, courts were gutted. Um, the budgets that Sacramento provided for our courts for years were uh, minuscule. In fact, there were cuts in the budget that left uh, our county uh, with uh, the Hobson's choice of closing courts uh, and denying the people who needed legal services access to the courts. Now, we're coming out of that. That's why I say it seems like ancient history, but part of the reason that we're coming out of that is that bar associations like the Beverly Hills Bar Association went to Sacramento um, and talked to legislators, many of whom are not lawyers, about the need to fund the third co-equal branch of government so that people would have access to the courts. Um, and I am proud to say that I participated in that effort, and I think I may have played a small role in uh, getting that money back and getting uh, us uh, back on our feet, although probably the, the biggest thing was uh, the economy. <laughs> but what the heck, you, know, you gotta, gotta be lucky, better be lucky than smart, right? But I did that, and we all did that, as members of the Beverly Hills Bar Association. But finally, really, the most important leg of that stool that the Beverly Hills Bar Association sits on is service. In service to others, we find ourselves revitalized and our commitment to the organization is deepened. So we have a long tradition at the Beverly Hills Bar Association of service. We have uh, the Roxbury Park Legal Clinic. Uh, we have, uh, we serve, uh, and these are, most of these are, are, are barristers, our young lawyers, who of course are the, the most idealistic uh, and the most energetic members that we have, serve meals to the homeless. Um, they provide uh, uh, legal services at the LA Law Library for Law Day. Um, 
they write uh, wills for heroes, uh, fire uh, folks, policemen, uh, military veterans. Um, but I would like for our service to extend beyond the law. I would like for us to reach out into the community uh, and stand shoulder to shoulder with the organizations that are providing services to all kinds of people and all kinds of services. There's no reason that we have to provide only legal services. There's no reason that we can't shoulder a two by four uh, and uh, carry some nails and a hammer to a Habitat for Humanity work site or uh, go to Homeboy Industries um, or uh, help clean the beach for uh, Heal the Bay. Um, we need to be out among the public. We need to be caring about the same things that everybody does. We are, after all, members of the same community. So I would tell you to expect there to be a wide variety of opportunities to serve um, this year as with me as president. So the last thing I want to talk about is uh, gratitude. That really is what I think motivates us. That's the force that makes it possible for us. We are really very lucky as attorneys. We need to express and internalize gratitude for the opportunity to occupy the positions of prestige, honor, and authority that we hold. Uh, we need to be grateful for the privilege of serving society as lawyers. And it is a privilege. We have access to means and methods of making positive change in our society. And that's a privilege that we need to be grateful for. And we need to let others know that we are grateful for it. Not that we're simply earning fees, not that we're uh, you know, driving a fancy car, but that we are thankful to society, thankful to the people that we serve, for the chance to serve them. I'll do the best I can to express that and embody that gratitude in the upcoming year, and I hope that you will join me. And I thank you again for being here tonight. We'll move on with our program. <laughs> I, I, I want, I want uh, again, I want, to, I want to thank the staff for putting the electric coils under your seat so that you all had to stand up. That worked out, that worked very well, folks, so thanks. Thank you very much. Um, you remember I talked to you about the Barristers, uh, which is our young lawyers group, and what a great group of people they are, uh, the idealism, the energy that they bring, um, and uh, so, the person that I'm going to bring up to the podium now really embodies that. She is the incoming president of our barristers, uh, and she is, without a doubt, the most energetic, the sunniest uh, person that I know. It's really a treat. I look forward to Tuesdays um, because I know that I will be able to see Dira Imam uh, at the meeting. Um, so without further ado, and believe me, I could give you a hell of a lot more ado, uh, would you come up, please, Dira? So while she's coming up, let me, let me give you a brief um, biography of Dira. She's senior associate attorney at Lawrence H. Jacobson APC in Beverly Hills, and she handles principally transactional matters for businesses and individuals. She focuses on business and corporate law, real estate, and estate planning. Dira um, has participated in virtually all of the barrister's activities and special projects and has held BH, BA leadership positions uh, you know, on the barrister's board of governors, the board of governors of the, of the big board, as we call it, the Beverly Hills Bar Association Board of Governors, the Bar Foundation Scholarship Donor Committee, Foundation Board of Directors. She is a past recipient of the Barrister's Lawrence J. Blake Award and the BHBA Board of Governors Award for her uh, very valuable work in uh, creating uh, and uh, running the uh, Committee on Empowering Women. Uh, she's a California native, 
um, a uh, graduate of University of California, Irvine, uh, and the Abraham Lincoln University School of Law. Uh, and she has a background in marketing and real estate uh, and law office administration before she became a, an extremely capable attorney. Please, dear. Well, thank you so much, Mr. President. That was quite sweet. And um, thank you all for being here. Um, first thing that I want to do as the incoming president of the Barristers is to thank our immediate past president for the last half hour or so, Mr. Jack McMorrow. Jack has been amazing to work with. He's very easy to work with and keeps his sense of humor despite some of the challenges we've faced and was actually the idea person between our, before our Hollywood Bowl event that we are now making an annual event for the barristers. So Jack, please come up and receive your award because you deserve it. Um, thank you so much. I am excited to see that it was the biggest one on the table. Um, <laughs> the biggest one left on the table. Um, I, I will make it short because this is not my night. I had my night. I am. I couldn't be happier to be uh, witnessing Dira's night and, and to hear what she has to say. Um, the only thing that that I could not not say tonight was that in 1994, Mighty Ducks 2 came out. And it, during that, they shopped on Rodeo Drive. And as a Midwesterner, that was my first introduction to Beverly Hills. And I, to, to be here and represent such a, you know, prestigious group of individuals and to work with the people that I have is really, really, um, a trip and really a dream come true and really an honor in a way that, you know, perhaps other people don't fully understand. So I have tremendous respect for the Beverly Hills Bar Association and this community and it has been an incredible pleasure and honor to serve. So um, thank you so much and to all of my loved ones and the members of the barrister section and um, I can't wait to hear what Deera has to say because uh, this is a long time coming. She is one of the most involved members in the Beverly Hills Bar Association association wide and has been here longer and more involved than anybody I can identify. Um, she is fantastic um, in and outside the Beverly Hills Bar Association and I just, I'm one of her biggest fans. So that's all I have to say. Thank you, Jack. I was supposed to start crying later. <laughs> and thank you to the Beverly Hills Bar Association and the Beverly Hills Foundation for having me here. This is something that in my wildest dreams I would never have thought I would have been able to do. So um, I really appreciate being here. I really do. Um, it has been my pleasure to serve here with our immediate, with our uh, Beverly Hills Bar Association, with our Roxbury Park Legal Clinic. Oh, and I, I'm so sorry, I have to actually thank all the presidents that came before me. Um, so the barristers, past presidents that I've worked with, and some that I know on the Board of Governors, others that I know that I actually have served under as their secretary or treasurer or some other board member position that I had. Um, John Rubiner, Christopher Bradford, Richard Kaplan, Gregory Vickeroff, Daron Igbali, Jan Goldstein, Linda Spiegel, and Stephen Roucher. Um, thank you for being here with me tonight. Um, I've worked with a lot of you, and I appreciate your leadership in the, the things that you have shown me, how to actually lead and be an effective president, will serve me throughout my term this year. So thank you for being here and being here during my moment to share it with me. So if we could have a hand for the past barristers presidents, I would love that. <laughs> to the barrister executive committee, Jack, David, and Daniel, and to the entire barrister board, I am honored 
that you would trust me with this position. So thank you very much for that. Um, and I'm glad that you guys are here with me also. So thank you for being here. Um, it is with honor that I assume this role. Uh, understanding the difficulty of the task and the responsibility that it entails, uh, that I'm grateful for having the past presidents and my barrister board behind me. Uh, over the last 10 years, as you've heard, I've been working with so many people here in this room, and they've been so very supportive of me, and I'm grateful for that, because as I said, I never thought I'd be standing here. Um, I have wonderful examples of what a president should be, and it makes me look forward to taking the helm to lead in the great work of the Beverly Hills Bar Association and our Barristers Board. The Be Beverly Hills Bar Association has been in the forefront of um, representing underrepresented members of our society. We have our Roxbury Park Legal Clinic once a month, where, which was originally for the elderly and now has turned into something that actually serves all members of our public and people come who would not normally know where to go to get legal help. And I've been there with Jack and I've been there with Jonah and with David and Jan and Jasmine, you guys have all been involved there and I thank you for your service there and I hope that we really continue to work together and make it even bigger and better. Um, the, we also have our Sam Michelle Homeless Seltzer, then I want to thank Leroy for taking the helm on that and actually continuing it. We serve over 60 homeless people once a month. We create a menu and I've actually been there after we've served them and received applause for the food that we made and for serving them and it was one of the most touching things and unnecessary and just such a an act of gratitude that I was really moved by it when I was there. It was amazing. So we also have our teen court committee. Jan and I are working on that right now, where it's a diversionary program for teen teenagers who commit small misdemeanors, but it allows them to continually be held accountable without entering the system. And their peers will judge them. I was recently at teen court at a hate crime trial and it was amazing to see the teen jurors ask such pertinent questions and interview the plaintiff and defendant and come up with a sentencing that seemed entirely appropriate. And I learned a lot from it and I know the students did as well. So it's no wonder to me that the barristers of the Beverly Hills Bar Association were chosen by the American Bar Association to be the premier barristers out of the 330th affiliates. And I'm so proud of that and proud to be a part of it. Now, while the barristers are heavily involved with community service, the barristers also try to make a difference with the attorneys that are coming into the profession. We have our law school outreach program trying to bring people into a more inviting environment. Um, recently, there was an article in the New York Law Journal that discussed how millennial lawyers are much less likely to show up at bar association functions because the more, they feel disconnected from the more experienced attorneys. And one young lawyer in New York City said that attending a bar association was event like was like going to the doctor. You you have to do it. It's dreadful, but you know it's good for you. <laughs> So the barristers, on the other hand, were, were trying to create a more welcoming environment for those young lawyers that are coming into the profession so they can get to know us and get to know all of you so that we can provide them with mentorship at our new admittees reception. They can come and meet everyone and be involved with the association at large, not just the younger attorneys. I've also seen at our happy hours, um, which um, Jasmine and Kent, you've been great at this this year. Thank you so much. I've seen where the younger attorneys will ask for advice from other younger attorneys and they'll talk about cases and they just discuss things. So it's not just that they want to drink and you know, get crazy. It's like they're actually doing work while they're there and learning things and connecting. And that's one of the things that we wanna focus on with our Hollywood Bowl event. Like I said, Jack and David were on that committee with me. Thank you so much. Um, and Jasmine, actually, 
this event is to bring more young people into something that would be fun for them, but also to meet us and all of you and to be able to connect and have a place where they have friends and where they can make connections and just be able to get the mentorship that they need outside of a formal class environment. And so that's why we have these fun events, because it brings people in. And we get to talk to them, and they get to talk to us. And we're a great group of people. So um, with all of the great people on our board and the great activities we do, I mean, it's amazing. But only possible because of the employees of the Beverly Hills Bar Association. So I want to thank you all. See, I'm, I, hopefully I don't forget anybody because I'm standing up here in front of a bunch of people, okay? So please bear with me. I want to thank you, Pamela. You've been amazing always to me. Marion, Shelly, Danny, Jose, Jamal, Shirley, Janice, Carl, Genna, Alex, and Matt. All of you have been so friendly to me and so open and helpful, and I can't wait to be able to work with you through this year and get so many things done with the barristers. So thank you for that. And especially thank you to Mark Steinberg, our CEO, who has always been so kind to me that uh, from the first day I met him, I, I was so just foreign to this whole thing. And I'm standing in fr front of Ronald George and Mr. Jacobson, my boss, and he introduces me to Mark Steinberg and he says, oh, she's delightful. <laughs> And it just made me feel so much better being in that situation, not having to be stiff and formal and everything else. And so thank you, Mark. I will, uh, I really look forward to working with you during my presidency, and I'm going to convince you to stay a little longer. <laughs> um, so thank you all the staff and Mark for your tireless efforts. And uh, I do look forward to working with you all in the years, this year to come. Um, I need to mention how I appreciate being a member of the Beverly Hills Bar Association. It's an, a, a, an association that's become nationally known for work in the community, for fostering of long-lasting relationships. And personally, I'm grateful for the opportunity to become involved with things that I'm passionate about here, and also to have met lifelong friends here. So these things are real. We're not just saying it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, finally, I would be remiss if I didn't mention the people who helped me to come to this place in my life. Um, at least those of you who are seated here. Uh, Mr. Lawrence Jacobson, thank you for encouraging me to get involved here with the BHBA. Thank you for your mentorship for making every day at work a learning experience and for making me part of your family. I, I can't thank you enough. Um, to my colleagues, Daisy and Nushin, I want, this was the part that I planned to cry about. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, want you, I want to thank you guys for um, helping make the days go by easier in our very challenging profession and for finding humor when they don't go easily. Um, Vicky, thank you for always telling me that I can do anything and for being ready to pounce on anyone who wants to stand in my way. I, you are amazing. And also our incredible group, the Rum Runners, thank you for, for being, letting me be a part of that. It's amazing. And um, Jan, thank you for talking me off the ledge more than once <laughs> and for being more excited for me than I am. And um, I want to thank my brother, Karim, and my sister, Soroya, who couldn't be here to share my, this moment with me. But I want to thank them for sharing my experiences with me the only way that siblings can and for each of them supporting me in the way that they know how. Um, and to my goddaughter, Daria, for being the light in my life and my hope for the future. And to my mom, bless you. <laughs> to my mom, Angela, thank you for encouraging me through law school and beyond, and for bringing Mel 
my, my stepdad or my dad into our lives. Um, he literally fasted and prayed for every one of my law school exams. <laughs> he, he actually did that. I didn't find out until after I graduated. Um, I know he's now looking out a window in heaven and waiting for me to arrive one day. <laughs> Thank you also to this blessed United States of America for allowing me the freedom to be whatever I want to be. We're so unlike so many other countries, and I'm so grateful to be a born American. I can't be more proud of this country despite our shortcomings. And thank you that by the grace of God, I'm standing here and that he keeps me standing. There are mother, many others I'd like to thank, but you guys would be here well into the night and throughout my term, so um, <laughs> I think that you guys, it's going to be a long night already. I don't know if you want to hear all of it. And so it is with a heart of gratitude and a sense of pride that I take on this position as barrister president to lead, advocate, and serve with you all. And thank you for being here with me. A lot of people in this room know Linda Spiegel already. Uh, she is a, a former president of this association. Uh, my notes say that she was the sixth past barristers president, try saying that three times fast, and the 10th woman to be installed as BHBA president. She is, uh, her day job is a certified mediator and attorney and general counsel for a real estate company in Beverly Hills where she focuses on leasing, management, and related landlord-tenant matters for commercial and residential property. And uh, by the way, she negotiates and drafts all of the BHBA leases for subtenants uh, in our offices, which keeps her very busy. And I don't think she charges for that. <clears throat> so let's keep on doing it that way, okay, Linda? Um, <laughs> Uh, she is currently the president of the Beverly Hills Bar Foundation, which is the, the bar's charitable foundation, uh, and I think she'll, you'll probably hear a lot about what that does uh, and the very important work of the foundation. Please come up. Linda. Okay, so because it's late in the evening and there's still much uh, on the program, I'm going to be very, very brief. For forgive me, I will not be as eloquent as all of my predecessors, but they have given you a great idea of what a wonderful family the BHBA is. So I'd like to talk about the foundation. Um, on your tables, there are cards that will tell you approximately most of the things that the foundation does. If you run out of these, each of you should take either one of these or a menu. And the challenge tonight is to write your name and a pledge for a uh, pledge to give to the foundation. It's a charitable donation. It's tax deductible. And I'm, while you are writing your name and your pledges, I'm going to tell you a little bit about where that money goes. Um, before I do that, and this is for extra time to write your names, and please, I'm, we're going to collect all the pledges and announce who um, was generous enough to give. I want to first acknowledge past presidents of the foundation who are here with us this evening, Nicholas Alice, Kenneth Petrulis, and Benita Moore. Thank you for joining with us, and thank you for your service to the foundation. So third time's the charm, right? I am continuing as the president of the foundation for the third time, and this is what the foundation funds. You've heard from the barristers who are our most vibrant and our most uh, effective representation of what good lawyers do for the community, our pro bono work. Um, they, once a month, free legal guidance to the entire community at Roxbury Park, uh, the teen court that Dira talked about, and the San Michelle feeding the homeless. The foundation, through your generous support, 
provides the funding to make sure those programs can continue. In addition to those, every year, we honor the California Supreme Court, and at that luncheon, we present scholarships to the area law schools, to law school students who are of financial need and have committed themselves to public service. And many of those past scholarship recipients have gone on to um, serve in the public defender's office, become judges, become politicians. They, they've gone on to great things which they otherwise couldn't have done without the scholarships that the foundation funds, again, through that generous donation that you're pledged that you're going to make this evening. And uh, among one of the other things that we do is a rule of law, which is um, supported by Ken Petrullis and his law firm, um, which gives approximately three uh, awards for writing legal writing competition on the rule of law. Um, and lastly, a program that I started when I was association president, which um, is still in its nascent uh, status, is a modest means legal service. And the purpose of that is to close the justice gap. Those people that make more than nothing so that they can't qualify for legal aid. They don't make enough to afford any one of our billable hours, and yet they make something, and they can afford to pay something. So it is sort of an incubator program for younger lawyers or even more established lawyers who want to give back to the community. They limit their hourly fees to make it a affordable for those members of our community who can afford a modest hourly rate. Um, and so all of you who are now going to put up your cards, and I'm going to ask my fellow board members, if everybody raised the card, pledge card that they uh, filled out, put their name and money, dollar amount in, I'm going to ask our fellow board members from the uh, board to collect them, and I'm going to tell you who they are. Um, Mark Lieberman is our secretary. Our treasurer is Ferris Greenberger. Our VP of development, Steve Young. Our chair of investment, Glenn Gottlieb and our past chair, Supreme Court Donor Committee, Bonnie Moore, and our other fellow uh, board members, Olga Malayans, Howard Fisher, Rick Kaplan, Bob Aronoff. Um, all of you I want to thank for your dedication to the board, um, and I, of course, want to thank the staff, and nothing happens without Mark Steinberg, so he's always one of our more important uh, people to thank. And he will stick around. He's promised to be emeritus uh, CEO, so he'll, he'll stick around. He'll still be there. Be there. Um, OK, so had, did anybody fill out a pledge card? Yay! OK, so challenge. This is a, you know, let's see. Who of you, who filled out? If I can ask my board members to collect it so we can announce who uh, filled it out. And I can show everybody how generous the um, Beverly Hills Bar Association is and the foundation can be. Anybody, anybody? Oh, cool, okay. Good job. Okay, uh, let, me, let me announce those in the meantime, Mike. <laughs> I love this, okay. So I want, I want to generously thank Tony Ross. I want to thank LaVon Lawson. I want to thank Adam Siegler. I want to thank, uh-oh, Chris Bradford. Good thing I knew that name. Um, Michael Suhigian. And oh my god, there's a chick here. <laughs> Steve Young. And oh wow, um, Megan Green. And uh, Steve Young. Thank you to all of our donors. Those of you, those of you who want to give and didn't did, want to do it later than right now, please go online to our website, bhbf.org, and please generously contribute so we can continue to support the good works of the Beverly Hills Bar Association. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I have a 14-year-old son who has to go to school tomorrow at quarter to seven. So I'm going to be uh, pretty quick about this, um, but I don't 
mean by being quick about it to slight the honors that these uh, individuals are about to receive. Uh, they are well deserved uh, and they are uh, the uh, benefit of uh, many years uh, of diligent service. I've worked with these folks and I can tell you that they have uh, put in countless hours uh, to benefit uh, this association um, and its members. So, uh, one of the great things that Mark does is he prepares these multi-page scripts uh, and then you have to figure out where you are. Um, okay, the first uh, award goes to uh, a, a great guy and a real good friend of mine uh, on the board, uh, Brian Leepak. So, uh, Brian is uh, a uh, lawyer in, uh, in the firm of Brian Leepak and Associates, PC in Westwood, a certified family law specialist and a past co-chair of our family law section. Uh, he received his undergraduate degree in behavioral science and law from the University of Wisconsin. Uh, he's actually a double badger, uh, having also gotten his law degree from the University of Wisconsin Law School. The award is being given to Brian because uh, he uh, is the uh, founder uh, and uh, the chief cook and bottle washer of the new law practice management and technology section. Uh, he has put together a calendar of monthly programs uh, on trial preparation, cybersecurity, computer and intellectual technology tips, smart business practices. Uh, he is dedicated, reliable, and creative, uh, and also a hell of a lot of fun. Um, Brian, would you please come up uh, and accept your award? Congratulations, Brian. Okay, our next award is the Board of Governors Award, and that will go to Natalia Aronovich. Um, she is receiving this award for her work with two practice area groups, business law and international law. She co-chaired the business law section, presenting unique programs on business law, trademarks, and copyright with a focus on the international arena. She's also been involved in the launch of the International Law Committee. Natalia is licensed in California and Brazil, um, and she practices law at uh, the Aronovich Law Firm in Los Angeles. Natalia, please. Okie doke. Oh, okay. Now the Chief Executive Officer's Award goes to uh, a true mocker of the Beverly Hills Bar Association. Uh, this is somebody who has been behind uh, this association in so many ways, uh, and he is really a VIP uh, in our association. Um, and his name is Steve Mindell. Uh, he is uh, the managing partner at Feinberg, Mendel, Brandt, and Klein in West Los Angeles, a certified family law specialist, a fellow of the American Academy of Matrimonial Lawyers, Southern California chapter, and the International Academy of Family Lawyers. He is a, 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 a severely conflicted uh, individual, having gotten his undergraduate degree from UCLA and his law degree from USC. Um, <laughs> So he is receiving the Chief Executive Officer's Award for his dynamic leadership of the Managing Partners Forum. Uh, he has creatively selected key speakers on important topics and issues for law firm managers, built a solid portfolio of law firm leaders and presentations and lively discussions about law firm practice management. Uh, he is somebody that I am proud to call a friend, uh, and I would have him come up, please. Thank you. Okay, well, the honorees aren't supposed to say anything, but I would be far amiss. You, you can't ask a managing partner to come up and get an award and not say something. 
We all have to raise a toast to Mark Steinberg tonight because Mark has been an inspiration to all of us. He knows what he's doing. He gets leadership. He gets commitment. And everybody raise a glass and let's have one toast to Mark Steinberg. Okay, this last uh, award is the Barristers Lawrence J. Blake Award, and it goes to Jonah Grossbart. Um, he uh, has uh, provided two years of dedicated leadership of the monthly Roxbury Park Legal Clinic, which you heard Dira talk about. Uh, his team of reliable volunteer attorneys welcome the public and answer legal questions about wills and trusts, contracts, landlord, tenant, personal injury issues, and more. People are grateful for the legal clinic services and Jonah's no-nonsense, low-key, and cheerful approach sets the tone. He practices IP law at SRIP Law in Los Angeles and is also licensed in New York. His background is business litigation, securities, entertainment, and dispute resolution. He is a graduate of Tulane University and a cum laude graduate from Pace University School of Law. Jonah, please come up to accept your award. Okay, I said last award, but I lied. Because Steve Mandel, as usual, stole my thunder. We have had in the Beverly Hills Bar Association for a number of years the Lewis Fox Award uh, that was named after a former executive director of our organization uh, and was given for distinguished and exemplary service to the association. As you have heard multiple times tonight, our executive director, actually our CEO, uh, is after 16 years of exemplary service retiring at the end of this year. Uh, and so we have decided to change the name of this award from the Lou Fox Award to the Fox Steinberg Award. And there could be no more deserving recipient of the inaugural Fox Steinberg Award than Mark Steinberg. allowed to speak or not, but I'm going to. It's not on the script. I, I'll put it on the script post dinner. This is a big surprise for me. I was not prepared for this, but I want to thank each and every one of you for your warmth and your support. I've been very blessed over 16 years to have 16 wonderful leadership groups, three wonderful boards. I work for a lot of people the association, the foundation, and the barristers. And I also work for my staff who've made me look very good over the last 16 years. Thank you all very, very much. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for coming. Please uh, have a safe drive home, and we look forward to seeing you at the 2020 installation dinner when I will finally heave a great sigh of relief. Good night, everyone.